Tech Television, and I'm sitting here with Ted. Um, state who you are. I'm Ted. And I'm Ted. My name's Kurt. And my name's Marty. Um, and I guess, like, you know, my first question is, like, I just read in an article um, last month that um, your Wood Goblins video was rejected by MTV. Yeah. And I just thought that was sort of interesting just because, like, you know, Plague Years is running on MTV and Stumbling Man is on MTV. And I just thought that, you know, it's sort of interesting that why would they, is, is why are they rejected? Man um, yeah, I think so. Well, um, I think they rejected it because they thought we were too ugly. Right. That, see, they I didn't want to bring that up. But that's what they, I said. They said, said, quote, unquote, that she we were a, uh, what, what did they say? Too unpleasant. We were unpleasant looking. Um, like, like, would you comment on, like, how, like, MTV, um, you know, it seems that they try to shape, like, trends going on. And you think this is just, like, another way for them to? Well, I suppose it is. I mean, I, I think that they have the right to uh, have whatever they want on their station. And they, they've chosen to, to purvey an image of, you know, spandex and hair spray. Whereas, we're something totally different. And, uh, I guess we're kind of proud to be rejected by their value system. Right. So, so kind of cool. we can't foresee in the future, Ted, you know, like, putting on a little mascara there, you know, to... Maybe a little mascara. Uh, maybe a little mascara and maybe a bit of rouge just to give our faces some color. I thought maybe Dad and I was going to use some powder tonight. I was going to just dab a little bit of powder on there. We didn't have time, really, because then to go out on stage and do some rocking. So we rock. If we had to do that in MTV, we would. Just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> um, but actually, um, one of my friends was talking to me, and I was just uh, he was just saying that in the Rocket, that publication, that um, you guys are desperately seeking a major label because you're really getting disgusted with all like the, the indie scene and well, the indie music industry. And I was wondering. If... Well, there there is some truth to that, but we're not desperately seeking a major deal. Okay. We're just kind of like casually, kind of casually shopping around for like a some kind of a some kind of a deal, you know, some kind of snappy deal. Oh, I love a good deal, don't you, Ted? Especially when it's a deal involving a purchase of some sort, cash, but, um, cold hard cash, and lots of it. See, well, what do you guys think of like Nirvana, like landing like a major deal? I mean, you know, just because like uh, them. We hold them in the highest regard. We do. Uh, they they loaned us money to do this tour, as a matter of fact. We and the money, the money that they got from the major label deal. And we love those guys. And I'd like to say hi, and we love you. And we'll spank you next time we see you. And rest assured, he means what he's talking about. The good kind of spanking. <laughs> um, see, now this, is, like. now this is a question that like I asked you like when I was in Pittsburgh. But um, you know, I sort of want to reiterate it. Um, just like you know, with Amy Santa. Uh, I'm sorry, I've still got her. <laughs> um, you know, with Eight Way Santa, it was more of a, you know, melodic sounding album, and the thing is that I think that some of your, like, critics or some of your fans would be saying that you're softening up. Like, what would you comment to that? Like, is this, you know, your way of being, like, um, you know, commercially accessible? It's absolutely true. We're whipping out, we're selling out, we, we just want to sell gum. And All we want to do like, is, is make lots of money, and these songs, we wrote them in, like, five minutes, just tossed them off, put them on the banjo, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, I think they're going to sell millions. Frankly, I think I think we're gonna become rich and famous. Not to fuck around with this punk rock crap anymore. That's right. Screw Do that. Let's drive fast cars. Far Simpson to the tenth power. Everything. Everything you always dreamed of. We got it. It's on the way. Um. You know. Oh, well, actually, it's another question. Whatever happened to that lawsuit? You know, with um. It's hanging in the closet. It's got mothballs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um. Because essentially, you know, when I talked to you last time, he was against the pop. But like, have you guys been like somehow, um, you know, are you guys held liable in any way? Who was lost? Who are you speaking? Um, one where the woman like had oh. her manhandled. Yeah, it. we are held liable. It has been. It's very it's yet to, it, What's been yet to be? Yeah, it has been. Well, it's, it's yet to be determined how much we're liable for. Oh, interesting. We'll oh. find out. So, uh, it's in litigation. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, has Sub Pop like said anything like? I get has been that Sub Pop said to you. Um, you, know, you guys have to, you know, sort of. Be a little bit more selective and, you know, actually, your, actually your record, uh, it was it was sub pop that uh, insisted on that. And so uh, we're taking responsible for it as it should be. We found it, we brought it to their attention. We were a bit concerned about it. Right. Um, and I just want to let you go, like, so where did you find that record cover? We found it.
it. Well, we found it at a friend's house, and a friend found it at a neighbor's house. Mm. And, like, what possessed you to, like, use that? Well, good taste. Good taste. Um. We hired a bunch of elephants to jump on the ceiling tonight, folks. I don't know if you can see or hear this, but it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, just another question. Um, what do you think is the most progressive thing happening in music today? Definitely the new Yes record. That and also the free broccoli you can get in the latest uh, basic roller sticks. You get a free sheet of cheese broccoli. <coughs> and not only that, there's the new five pack Marlboro boxes that look like one big cigarette pack. Have you seen those yet? That's progressive. Is, um, is there any like gimmick that we should like expect from Tad? Like, because like, you're sort well, of into gimmicks. A free though, right? pair of fresh underpants in every record. I can see that. You get in a CD, uh, I don't know what you get there, it's cankers or medicine or something. We're, we're marketing our own uh, sunflower seed company, too. Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to be bullish. <coughs> bullish on the market. That's good. Aggressiveness. That's what I like to see. Dad is bullish on the market. Um, okay. And now this is sort of like introspective, but um, now that like the whole sub pop thing has sort of died down, um, you know, how does that sort of affect you? You know, because like some, some what? pop. Well, you know, well, I don't know. That's my uh, opinion. I sort of think. Somebody I'm told me yesterday that Jimmy Carter was impressive. I was disappointed and I was shocked when I found that out. I was like, <gasps> no. But do you think that that's gonna have somehow like an effect on you just because like the whole like grunge thing isn't? I mean, like, what? I mean, what do you think? Do you think like grunge is like uh, a stagnant thing, or do you think it's like moving forward? Or oh, I, I, I think it's kind of stagnant actually. Let me, ask, let me answer your question with a question. Okay. What is grunge anyway? What is it? I asked you first. I think it's purely a media construction. Something that was made up by the media. We don't even know what it is. We, don't well, we should have let her answer. We should have let her answer. Wait, this yeah. happened to me last time. I don't want to be the Pretend that didn't happen, okay? No, well, it, it is a media label, obviously. But, um, you know, I was just interviewing this other band. And, but like, what do you call grunge? A lot of bands that are on Sub Pop. Oh. You mean, that's sort of like what defined it, didn't it? Did it? I mean, according to Music Press, I think it did. Well, well aren't you there, yes. Oh! <laughs> Just another bogus rock critic, actually. <laughs> well, but, um, they're you know, all it's bogus so, rock critics. Well, it's so hard to define it, though. Like, what would you define it as? You know what I mean? Because I just interviewed this other band, and they said it like they would. They're like a modern rock band, it's, it's and they're like you. a loud rock band. But isn't it just for convenience sake? You have to label it. I like to think of it as more as I don't know. Is it more as a country new wave? We're in a country new wave. Oh, this is wait. This is another question, kind of um, relevant. Um, do you, are there any like sort of like conventions that you guys listen to? Like music? Well, there's lots of conventions we go to. No. Quite a few. Different. The, uh, no, I mean like the Shriners was the biggest and best. Tad's a Shriner. He's got a Shriners out of the fence. Totally happy. I ride around in a small little car. No, like do you have like do you have any like any like seventies like you know are you like really into like Bach Mature or Overdrive or or is it the is there some little like little quirk in music that you like to listen to that like, oh, you yeah, wouldn't like anybody blue, else to know? Bluegrass for oh, there's like, there's you, nothing did, banjo. Would, would you have ever, nothing to hide. Would you ever would I would anybody ever catch you seeing like a Mariah Carey single or? You know what I mean? Like, well, if they if they did catch me, they'd also catch me engaging in some heinous acts, which I really shouldn't describe here. That's right. But I, I listen to Mariah Carey, watch Mariah Carey when I am at the hardware store. Hardware store. Shopping for hardware. Rare drummer just uh, met uh, Denver in New York. Um, you want to get around the table? Coming close to it. Oh, we can probably get another question on. Okay, I, 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 I can make it fast. Well, and you guys, now wait a minute. Now answer this question seriously, damn it. <laughs> I hope you got that on film. She just got really mad at us. <laughs> she swore all throughout the Jesus Lizard interview. So I'm being good. Aren't I being God really good? Aren't I being calm? I just took a Valium. Hurry. Okay, um, basically this is what I like. I just came back from the music seminar, and this hey. is like one question that um, David Thomas from here, he, he basically said that like self-expression has absolutely no place in music, and he like basically advocates like um, you know he thinks music should be socially conscious, and like it seems that when I talked to you um, previously that you, you were talking.
talking about that, you know, music should be, have, have some sort of like self-expression. Well, I guess I feel like the opposite of Dave Thomas, because I, I don't think he has any social responsibility whatsoever. Oh, really? I mean, <laughs> we feel that there's enough people making, you know, gaining fans over the fact that they do benefits for the poor and all this shit. I want to make this really clear. humanitarian type. Nobody should ever impose their views on anybody else. They shouldn't be on a soapbox being like that. They can teach you or trying to impose ideas or values on anybody else. What else we're doing it is, it is writing songs that imagery that we like, have melodies or rhythms that we like, or put them in the public with their lives, and that's fine. So you don't that's feel like, just, you don't feel like, I'm going to pick up and but you don't feel like, even though you're in a position where you could influence, you know, you know, a breath, you know, I wouldn't fans. want to. I don't think that's my job. Mm -hmm. Not at all. So As a matter of fact, I feel that's the lead of the crime. Mm -hmm. I agree. Full heart. So what is the role of a musician? Play music, express themselves with their instrument, totally, mm -hmm. and also for the microphone, huh. and for the studio and the live show, the stage. That's all there is. Okay. Any kind of social awareness, that's that's honey. Mm -hmm. Oops. Hi, I'm Tad. I'm Kurt, and this is Bit Bad Magazine. I'm Tad. I'm Kurt, and this is Bit Mag Video. Something. What? Television? I, I don't know. What is it?